In this video, I will be reviewing the relationship between stroke and chiropractic. What? I've been watching a lot of videos from Dr. Webb and Dr. Rayner. They're orthopedic and spinal surgeons who review chiropractic videos. And I actually really like their videos and agree with a lot of the negativity surrounding my profession. But there were a few things that I don't agree with and neither does the overwhelming amount of literature. The neck adjustments make me uncomfortable. When you're adjusting someone's spine, especially their neck, there's a lot of important structures. The arteries that are there, that there's been case reports of vertebral artery dissection. So he uses a paper from 2003 when there are plenty of other high level studies that have been published since it's 2021. It sounds like he just Googled a paper to support his statement. Also case studies are very, very low level studies. It basically just means that this happened to one person one time and here's how it happened. So I'm going to go over several case control studies, which basically takes all these smaller case studies like the one that Dr. Webb uses and puts them into one big study so that we can actually examine if there's a true relationship between chiropractic and stroke. So there's one more thing I'm going to pick on. You can easily dislocate a patient's facet joints, basically dislocate their damn head if you do it forcefully enough. Oh, yeah. <gasps> I, oh, yay. Bruh. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, shit. Just fix my problem in one swoop. Hey, I'm a heavy guy. They just pick me up by my head. That's so dope. So if you still think it's easy to dislocate somebody's head. <laughs> Anyways, before I begin, I want to make sure that you all know I am not anti-medicine. I have a huge referral network of orthopedists and surgeons that I work with if it is out of the chiropractic scope and they send patients back to me if it is out of the medical scope. I've had and watched multiple surgeries and I actually wanted to be an ortho until I was introduced to chiropractic in my pre-med classes at University of Miami. What? So there's that. Moving on, I hear it all the time, chiropractors cause strokes and it's because we do. The stroke in question is called a VBA stroke. VBA stands for vertebrobasilar artery. The artery runs through the cervical vertebrae and feeds blood to the brain. This type of stroke occurs when the intimal layer of the artery or the innermost layer is torn and obstructs blood going to the brain. This is called a dissection. Usually when we think of strokes, we think of older adults. This type of stroke is extremely rare and affects adults ages 45 and younger. The vast majority of these cases are spontaneous, meaning the underlying cause is unknown. Because there are documented cases in which a patient has sought chiropractic care prior to experiencing a VBA stroke, some medical providers have hypothesized that chiropractic adjustments cause stroke. However, neither the clinical or basic science research available on this topic have established a cause and effect relationship. The two most rigorous clinical studies are Cassidy 2008 and Elton 2015. In both of these papers, they found that you were just as likely to have seen a medical doctor as a doctor of chiropractic prior to having your stroke. <laughs> The authors of both studies concluded that any increased risk of stroke associated with medical visits or chiropractic visits is likely because these patients are looking for some type of treatment associated with dissection symptoms like neck pain or headaches. Meaning these people were going to have a stroke regardless of who they saw because they had the prerequisites for a stroke. There was already the dissection there. The Department of Neurosurgery at Penn State Medical Center concluded in 2016 there is no convincing evidence to support a causal link between chiropractic manipulation and cervical artery dissection. Belief in a causal link may have significant negative consequences. Again, this comes from the Department of Neurosurgery at Penn State. Dr. Webb is a neurosurgeon. And this is unfortunate. You know, he was probably misinformed in his studies and now it's on a YouTube video misinforming the masses. So last thing, looking at the actual mechanics of an adjustment, they're really not that crazy. It looks crazy and it sounds crazy, but if we look at the basic science research, it shows us that the biomechanical impact of an adjustment does not create strain on the internal carotid or vertebral artery blood flow greater than what would be expected with everyday normal movement. And I've linked these papers below. So to summarize, you're not gonna have a stroke unless you're already going to have that stroke. It doesn't matter whether you see an MD or a chiropractor. When you have the symptoms of headache and neck pain, you're going to go see one of the two of us to make it go away. So it's important for your healthcare provider to be aware of the signs and symptoms 
of this and make referrals when necessary. It's equally as important that patients are given evidence-based facts on the risks and benefits of all available treatments so they can make an informed decision. So I'm kind of calling out the docs that I had mentioned earlier in the video. I love their content and I do think that they say a lot of really great things against my profession that I actually agree with. But on this topic, I believe they're misinformed and therefore misinforming their audience. And the issue with this is that you could potentially be taking somebody away from a very harmless, non-invasive treatment and pushing them towards a more invasive treatment. So I want to finish with one last thing, and that is that manipulation and other forms of passive therapy are only a piece of the puzzle. If somebody comes into my office and they can only look this far with pain, within a few minutes, we'll easily be able to make them look over the shoulder with no pain. But that's not the full picture. We didn't actually fix anything for that person. We just opened up a temporary window where they have increased range of motion and decreased pain. The next step is PT and exercise so that we can really lock in those changes so that they become permanent for that person and teaching them the tools so that next time this happens, they don't have to rely on me every time their neck hurts. This is not my regular content, but if you like it, let me know. Go check out my other videos. All I do is crack content and I want you to know with this video that it is safe. I just bought a new way Spend a couple thousand just to cruise it Shawty said she love me but I swear she never prove it I never tell her but I put it in the music Well that's okay All I wanna do is make